Applying textures to curved surfaces requires a different technique. For this example, we'll use this turn null post. If we look at the center here, there are plenty of curved surfaces, of beads, coves, and fillets. To start out, I'm going to uh, paint this object with a texture straight out of the material browser. If we zoom in, you'll see we've got kind of a strange effect. This texture is actually tiled around this object. If I turn on the hidden geometry, you can see what's going on here. A curved surface in SketchUp is just a series of flat faces, and all of these individual facets have been painted with an individual copy of that texture. In order to give us a more realistic look, we'll have to use something called a projected texture. To understand what a projected texture is, visualize a slide projector, the one that's loaded with a slide of your texture. Next, we'd set up a screen to project onto, one that's perpendicular to our projector. Now we have a texture projected onto that screen. If we had a curved surface like this sphere and projected onto it, we'd end up with a different result. You'll notice that this object was treated as though it was translucent, and that projection goes completely through the entire object. To add a projected texture to this object, we'll start by drawing out a rectangle. This will be our virtual projection screen, and it sets up the orientation of our projector. Next, I'll paint the face with our desired texture. You'll notice that the size and shape of this screen don't really matter. It's only its orientation. If I right click on the face, we'll go to our context menu under texture and left click on projected. Next I'll open my component for editing and then select all objects. Next, I'll sample that texture from our projection screen by holding down the Alt key and then paint our texture onto the component. Now if we zoom in here, you'll see we have a much better representation of a wood texture and these turned portions have a much more realistic look. Another example of an object with curved faces or molding profiles. This is something I'm sure you're familiar with using in SketchUp. I've run a short section of crown on this uh, short wall mock-up. We'll begin by setting up a screen for our projection. We'll go ahead and paint this screen with a texture. You'll see we'll have to reorient the grain on this so by going to texture and position we can zoom in and grab our green dot by holding down on the left mouse button we'll rotate it into position and I'll slide down to that segmented blue arc to keep it in scale left click outside and then we'll right click one more time go to the context menu again and this time left click on projected while I'm here I can sample that texture by holding down on the Alt key. Now my paint bucket is loaded with that texture and ready to paint. Just like before, we'll open the component for editing. I'll triple click to select everything and apply my texture. If we zoom in here, we'll see this back wall has a pretty good projection. The uh, grain looks natural. However, the wall on the left side here looks a little strange. That texture is kind of skipping across. That has to do with the orientation of our screen and essentially the orientation of our projector. We could set up a new projection and project to the left wall, but there's an easier way. What I'll do is rotate my screen at an angle. We'll move it in, say, 45 degrees. So now what we've got is our projector set up in the middle of the room, projecting into that corner. And this should give us a much better result. I'm going to go ahead and sample that texture again, loading my paint bucket. 
we'll open the component for editing, triple click, and apply our texture. Now you'll see we've got a good representation on both corners. The problem with this technique is kind of a limitation. Is any sort of horizontal surface the texture skips across, sort of like it did with our first example. You can fix that if you want by opening the component for editing. We'll draw in the miter to create a new face and this time we'll just paint that flat portion with a regular unprojected texture. Now to save ourselves from having to go through this process again, we can make a component out of this screen. We'll call it Molding Projection. And Create. And we'll save it into a library. The top pane of my browser is the in-model library. There's my component. The bottom pane is a texture projection library. By left-clicking and dragging it into position, it'll be there anytime I need it. Now, anytime I need to project textures onto moldings, I'll simply go to my component browser, go to my library, and pull out my component. I can set it down anywhere inside the drawing close the browser and we'll open up this crown component for editing. Select everything and then sample the texture from this component. When we'll read it we'll take care of the base. And now that we're done we can simply select that component and delete it. If we zoom in You'll see I have a good projection on the flat portions of the base as well as the curved molding profile. We'll zoom up and take a look at our crown. By orbiting around here, you'll see we've uh, come up with a pretty good projection. To really hammer home the importance of the orientation of your projection, let's look at this example of a raked handrail. We'll set up a projection like this we're basically shooting straight across our handrail. When we apply our texture, the result we get is not very good. If we zoom in, you'll see the grain runs straight across our handrail. If we tipped our projection in our screen to the pitch of the stairs and then applied our texture, we're starting to get closer. However, if you look at the top of that handrail, the texture is skipping across it, kind of like the wall in our first crown example. For this, let's try tipping the camera up. Now we're actually projecting down on our handrail. If we apply this type of texture and zoom in, you'll see we get a pretty accurate representation. Adding projected textures to your bag of SketchUp tricks can help you turn what would be a good SketchUp rendering into a great SketchUp rendering.